Thanks so much, everybody, for coming to this class. Um, I will probably have some more straggling in as we go, but um, we have a really special guest today for our class. I'm super excited that he has um, come and agreed to do this class with us. Um, this new friend of mine, he's an agent for Boone Realty in Columbia and team leader of Sean Moore and Associates. He has over 18 years of experience and has been recognized as one of the number one agents within his company for transactions, volume, and commission. He found his passion in real estate after being a former police officer in Columbia, where he spent over 10 years training new officers. So it's my absolute pleasure to partner up with Sean Moore today and bring you some awesome ideas and strategies that you can um, use maybe in 2023 to benefit your business and get more success. So Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Um, before I turn it over to you, I just want to let everybody know that we will open up the class at the end for any Q&A that you might have. And Sean, I'm going to let you take it away, sir. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, guys, um, I've got just some stuff to help you wrap up your year and, and get ready for next year. Uh, this is what all of us in the industry, no matter how long we've been in it, what we should be doing uh, is a lot of office time. You know, it's cold outside. This is when uh, our office, as well as our team, really crunches the numbers, analyzes the past year, and and prepares for next year. Uh, we will be doing a, uh, a goal setting planning session within our office. We always like to do the office one, and then we do our own version within our team and, uh, and tweak it and make changes. Uh, I've always said to my team, uh, I don't have any goals. My goals are to help my team achieve their goals. So that's my job as the team leader. If the team is hitting their goals, then I've hit my goals and that's how I've operated for years. Uh, but I do want you to get out pen, paper, whatever you use to take notes. Um, some of the stuff I'm gonna share with you guys today is probably new to you. And a lot of it is probably rudimentary and and something you already know. But let's start with uh, three things that I think we all should be doing to get ready for next year. Um, the, the first thing I wanna talk about is you have to know your numbers. If you don't know the past, you're gonna repeat it, um, but we gotta have benchmarks. We gotta know where we're at. Um, I have always used this formula. Um, I don't know where I learned it or if I made it up myself. I'm really heavy into R&D and I don't mean research and and duplication, I mean, or research and development, I mean, rip off and duplicate. Um, so I, I, I learn from others and, and take the information that uh, I get from them and share it, you know, with, with others. But uh, if you're employed and all of us in real estate, we are not here um, in this industry because we want to be employed. I mean, the practitioners, the salesperson, the agents, I'm not talking about the staff. We are in this industry because we want to work for ourselves. We want to be self-employed. We don't want to work a nine to five. And, and I mean, I'm a former police officer. I could never go back to shift work. Uh, when I was a police officer, we worked eight and a half hour shifts. Then it went to 10 hour shifts. Then it went to 12 hour shifts. And I think today the Columbia Police Department still works 12 hour shifts. Those of us in, in our industry, you know, we're on call 24 hours a day. We might work, you know, one hour one day and, and 20 hours the next. And the biggest joke I have is um, we all work, you know, half a day. You know, I work seven days a week, but I work half a day and half a day is 12 hours out of 24 hours. Um, but I'm being a little facetious there and I'll explain that later. But if you work for someone else and you're employed or you have a salary, uh, the average full-time employee works a 2,000 hour a year. Uh, if you work a 40 hour week and there's 52 weeks in a year, that's 2,080 hours in a year on a 40 hour week. Most people get two weeks of vacation. So knock off 80 hours and the average employed person works about 2,000 hours a year. That doesn't include your management. That doesn't include overtime. Um, but I like to use that 2,000 hour as a base point in our industry to calculate our hourly worth. And you got to know your hourly worth in order to figure out your delegation of duties and what your next step is. Um, 
I would I, I tell everyone at this point, you know, if you know your net income, great. But very, very, very few people in our industry know their true net income. You know, we've got the number that we give the IRS. We've got our internal number that we have ourselves, whether it's right or wrong. Um, if you're on a team, if you're an individual agent, or if you're a team leader, that net income number is a percentage that varies greatly from the gross or the GCI gross commission income. But literally most of us know what we made last year. So take that GCI, that gross commission income number and divide it by 2000. And that's what you're worth per hour, pre-tax, pre-expenses. But when you see that number, that's kind of an aha. And that's when you need to say, okay, if I'm making, you know, $50 an hour or $500 an hour, can I afford to delegate? Can I afford to, to hire or outsource some of the duties that I don't want to do um, or don't have time to do? I tell everyone, take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. And at the top left-hand column, I'm left-handed. So I like the left side of the paper over the right. But write down what you love to do, everything in your business that you enjoy doing. And then on the right side of the piece of paper, write down everything you hate or you despise or you put off. And then those are the items on the right side of the paper that you should focus on, on outsourcing, hiring admin um, to do for you. And then you get to focus and cherry pick on the left side of the paper. And when you do that, you're operating in your area of expertise and your performance goes to the roof. I once heard a speaker say that, uh, what does an expert do? Well, an expert does the one thing they're good at and that's all they do. And they outsource and delegate and they avoid doing everything else. Um, so that's a great task to do this time of the year. You know, know your numbers calculate your hourly worth, and then create that pros and cons list so that you can delegate the duties that you're not good at. Um, another task that I've had a lot of people do, including some of the team members on my team, and I've been telling this for, for many, many years, people come to me and they say, Sean, I work 100 hours a week. I work 80 hours a week. And I look at them and I say, you don't. I don't believe you. And, and then I say ugly things like if you're in this business and you're in the sales portion, I'm talking specific, this today's presentation is really for those of us that are doing the day-to-day -day sales, whether it's with buyers or sellers, whether we're individual agents, whether we're team members or team leaders, that is what today's presentation, that is my target audience. But I say to people, if you're working 80 hours a week as a realtor, go get another job because your hourly worth has gone way down and you're working too many hours. You're working hard and not smart. This is an industry of intelligence and leverage and delegation. This is not an industry of super hard work and long, long hours. And here's how I can prove to you. If you think you work those hours, here's how I can prove to you that the, the hours you think you work are not there. Now, you time blockers, I love you time blockers. I am not a time blocker. I am a firefighter. I spend my whole weeks, my waking hours, putting out fires for the agents on my team and helping them solve problems. You can't time block to put out problems. For example, uh, just got off a phone call before this presentation with, uh, with uh, an executive client buying a very high value property and it's got a lot of deferred maintenance. You know, that client can't wait for me to answer his angst of his call. I had to deal with that literally right before I came on camera. Um, but what I want you to do to really figure out how many hours you work in this business is carry around a little notebook or on your calendar. We live and die by our Google calendar, and we'll talk about that later. But I want you to log hourly waking hours. I'm talking from when you wake up to when you go to sleep for about a week, about seven days, and not when you're on vacation, you know, when you're in the office and working and doing stuff. But I want you to write down each hour and it's hard to do. And sometimes you get behind and you got to go back and figure out what you did for the last six hours. But write down what you are doing on the hour for the hour for your waking hours. And then you can take and add those hours up 
and you will be amazed at what you spend your time doing versus what you think you spend your time doing. You will truly be amazed. I just went to the Remax Elite Retreat out in Dana Point, California about two months ago, six to eight weeks ago, and they had a speaker there that just, I became awestruck by this guy. Number one, he's been in the business three years. Number two, he's already at the highest award level you can get as a Remax agent, which is I think two or 2.5 million GCI a year. He's an individual agent with a part-time assistant and listen to this, he doesn't work with buyers. He just gives all his buyer leads away. He doesn't even take a referral and he has honed a system for sellers and seller leads and he time blocks and he maximizes every waking hour of his day. But what's even best about it, he broke down, he breaks down his week into, he calls it like the 168. I had a number is a hundred and something hours a week. And that includes playtime too. But what I loved about his, his story on time blocking and, and controlling and calculating what he does every hour was he, uh, and he goes, his name is Q and it's like Quinn, Quintavia something. Some of you may have heard from him. He's, he spoke last year at R4 and I think he'll probably speak again this year. But Q said he was, I put in like 40 hours a week for, for just hanging out and, and BSing with clients and friends. I mean, that is built in. There you go. Kalen said Q is awesome. Um, but, uh, it was just fascinating to see how fast this guy grew. Now he was an athlete and came from team sports. So there's a lot of education and background there from that. But uh, the little sheet I've got that she's put up there, um, 1B, really, truly, you owe it to yourself to write down and figure out how much you're really working in this industry. And that changes. I get it. You know, this is the slow time of year. This is the business planning time of year. You know, in the springtime when we're out with clients nonstop. You know, we are working a lot more hours per week. Um, and I already touched on C, I already touched on learn what you're good at and delegate what you're not. Uh, taking that piece of paper and drawing a, a line down the middle. And and that's what I've done. I, I've always had a coach and I, you know, I switch companies right now. I'm going through Entree Leadership with Dave Ramsey. And uh, I just started a journey with Workman Solutions. But uh, I believe in having a coach and I believe in having an accountability partner. But one thing I learned from a coach, and I think it was a Buffini coach, it was five to 10 years ago, was he had me go through what I love to do and hate to do. And one of the biggest things I hated to do was open mail. You know, we get so much junk mail. And so I, at the office, I've delegated opening the mail to my, to my assistant, my transaction coordinator. And at home, I've delegated that to my wife. And just getting mail and opening letters off my plate has just really, it's amazing how much getting that stuff you absolutely despise off your plate, how much that helps you. Um, so, so really focus in, uh, you know, those of us that are on teams and different roles on teams, I met a team lead out of Florida through Women's Council Realtors and mega team. They do over a hundred million a year in, in, uh, in sales and volume. And uh, she is a buyer's agent on her team. She is not a listing agent. She hates working with sellers. She loves doing open houses and she loves buyers. And I was just like, wow, that like is totally opposite of everything you hear. But what I loved about her success is she's doing what she's great at and nothing else. And she's hired a listing agent and a listing partner to do the sellers. And she loves to be out with the buyers full time. That is her niche. Um, so do what you're great at. Do what you love. We're in the entrepreneurial world. Focus on, you know, my father, before he passed away, he said, all you got to do is, is figure out what you love to do and excel and be the best at it in your marketplace. And the money will follow. If you truly are doing what you love to do, number one, you're not going to work because you love it. It's not a job. I will never work a job again in my life. I will always do what I love to do. It's like, you know, I'm hitting the 20 year mark. I'm in my 18th year of real estate. I'm now getting into, I'm using my team as a source of income, 
but I'm now getting into the aspects of all the goals and dreams that I wanted to do from day one. I'm doing a subdivision development. I'm building a self-storage facility for passive income and building my dream house for myself. You know, I've, I've set up a platform to get to spend the majority of my time doing what I love. And that's what this is all about. Okay, let's get on to number two, maintaining a database. Uh, man, from day one to today, it cringes me, it makes my heart ache to talk to so many people in this business, whether it's their first year or their 25th year, who do not maintain a database. That is the lifeblood of everything we do and your Google contacts or your iTax or iPhone. I'm not an iPhone guy, so I don't know what the Apple stuff is. That is not a database. Um, that is a passive storage system that does nothing. Um, now, do we use Google Contacts and import it into our CRM? Absolutely. Um, but I, I love uh, Jared James. I've been following a lot of his teachings lately and have met him in person several times. And, and if you've got a list of people and you're not touching base with those people on a regular basis, your database is worthless, right? Uh, and right now, I was just looking. We use Follow Up Boss, and I've actually been in the office all morning updating I like to go in at least once or twice a week and look at the team and look at the leads and make sure they're being followed up. I know I've got somebody hired that is doing that, but I'm kind of one of these micro, I'm, I'm a passive micromanager. I'm not an active, I'm not breathing down my agent's throats, but I am from afar making sure that they're on task and making sure that the software and systems are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it's amazing. If you are if you are following up and you are using the systems of the state of the art CRMs like Follow Up Boss, uh, it is amazing how much conversion they will do for you. We've partnered with an AI company in the last couple of years, and and our conversion ratios have gone gone way up. Uh, we started with a company called Structurally AI, and we're now with a company called Wilopo. That their AI is called Raya, and these, these AIs and these follow-up systems are, are completely converting leads for us at a much higher level than even we were able to do. You know, we, we have a rule that, you know, we make, we need a new lead must, we must attempt to touch base with that lead seven times in three days. So when a lead comes in, no matter the source of the lead, we will try seven times in, in, in three days uh, to make contact. And, and of those seven times, that's all three aspects. That's text, that's phone and email. So really that's 21 times because each step that we, we take, we take that action step via text, phone and email each time. And my rule of thumb is if you're not doing it, there's other agents out there that are doing, that are working that hard. You know, they, the, the old military, I'm a cop. I was never in the military, but the old adage that your adversary or your enemy is always training, is always preparing. Well, we don't really have enemies in our industry, but we have got our peers and our competitors. I went on a listing appointment yesterday and the seller wanted my opinion on my competition. And I graciously told him I wasn't going to do that, but he couldn't believe that the other two agents that were there before him didn't show up with any CMA or any numbers. And he didn't know that they were supposed to until I pulled out my numbers and my CMA for his house. And he got one digitally before the appointment in a printed version at the appointment. And he was just kind of like, wow, you know, you don't know what you don't know, you don't know. And when he saw my home seller's handbook and beautiful content, let's you know, this is, this is what you're up against. You're up against true professionals that have got beautiful marketing materials and, and they're going to bat at 110%. And if you're not showing up with the same content, the same information, the same material, you're going to lose to those people. Um, and, and I see it every day, you know, especially with the database. Uh, I was looking at follow up boss before the call and We've got over 18,000 um, contacts in there. I can't say past clients or current clients, but 
those are all lead sources over 18 years and they're not passive. I mean, we are marketing to all 18,000 of those people. Um, and whatever you do, and those of you that need help, feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Um, you know, if you're an individual agent or you don't have a big database, there's actually some state-of-the-art follow-up systems out there that are totally free until your contact list gets to a certain threshold, like 500 or 1,000 contacts. Um, so you don't even have to pay for it. Uh, Remax Lead Street is a state-of-the-art system. It's cumbersome. I don't love it. But if you learn it, I know teams that live and die in it. In fact, there's a team probably in your office that I think lives and dies inside Lead Street, and they know it better than anyone. Um, the Fran Campbell team, uh, they live there, and they are true experts at using Lead Street. Uh, let's talk about calendars on, on 2B. Uh, I, I have a team. I focus on the sellers. And I've got buyer's agents that, that work underneath me. I've got an ISA, a transaction coordinator, and a marketing director. So we've got three staff and three in production, a team of six. And uh, the girls, my buyer's agents, are not database people. They are not calendar people. They are not paperwork people. They are social. They are relational. And they rely on us to provide all the stuff, like I told you earlier, they rely on us to provide the backbone for the stuff that they're not good at doing. And um, we share our calendars. We can always see what each other is doing. Uh, we put appointments. We actually, through our showing software, we use showing time here in Columbia. And it automatically imports all their showing appointments into their calendars so that we can see it. And um, we have access, geolocation access to their whereabouts for safety. You know, I'm a retired police officer. I want to know where they're at in case they're in trouble. And uh, so we, we live and die by our calendars. We put, I require them to put their personal time in the calendars uh, so that we don't bug them when they're busy with the kids and the family. I think, I think it's very important to live and die by a calendar um, for that reason, so that you have a balance. There's nothing wrong with, uh, one of my agents, she and her daughter are into showing horses and horseback riding. And I see a lot of horseback riding appointments. And you know what? That's why we're in this business. We're in this business to fund the fun by serving others. That is our motto. The motto of Sean Moore Associates is we fund the fun in service to others. And, and you know, we're, this isn't a Monday through Friday, nine to five industry. So it's okay if it's two o'clock on a Wednesday and we're out playing. I, I actually, spent, I'm a morning person, COVID. I got COVID when COVID first hit and it completely changed my biological clock. And I went from a late, it might've been old age too. Um, but I completely went from a late night owl, staying up till one, two in the morning and sleeping in and my biological clock reversed. And now I can't sleep past 6 a.m. And I'm pretty tired by 9, 10 p.m. But I come into the office early I'm usually done with my day by 11, noon at the latest, and I usually go play at the farms all afternoon unless I've got an appointment. But right now, you know, and, and I don't work 40 hours a week. I don't, I don't think I worked 40 hours a week my, my first year in the business. Um, I just don't believe that, that this is an industry that, that you do that and prove me wrong. I mean, I work smart. I don't work hard. I mean, I guess I work hard, but I don't work a lot of hours. I didn't get into real estate to, to pound the clock, to pound the time clock. Um, your cost per hour, your, your value per hour goes way down. And then on 2C, uh, as I tell the girls, um, when they're not using their calendars, um, I always say, if it's not on the calendar, if it's not scheduled, it, it didn't happen or it's not gonna happen. And uh, we've gotten in a really good habit lately. Uh, I don't recall where we learned it, but when you're finishing an appointment, a phone call, a text, or an email with any client, any current client, any past client, any future client, if you do this one step, statistically speaking, they say your business will double in 12 months. Schedule the next contact. Okay? So you get off the phone with a prospective seller or a buyer that you just finished showing homes. The next thing you do 
before you go on to your next item of business is and it doesn't have to be scheduled directly with them. It's got to be on your calendar between you, yourself, and I. But schedule that next contact. The guy Q. That's what Q does. Q Q is horrible at, at everything I'm talking about today. He's horrible about calendars and notes and email and systems and software. He doesn't know any of that stuff. So what he does is he uh, he says on the phone call or the text or the email, I will talk to you next Friday. And then he calls or emails or texts the next person. He says, I will talk to you next Thursday. And it is hilarious. So then he goes into his iPhone. He's an Apple guy. And he types in the keyword search next Thursday or next Friday. And everyone he said the words next Thursday or Friday pops up. That is literally this guy's organization system. But it works. It's ingenious. And it's amazing. Now, I'm a little more sophisticated. I have to have a name, an address, and everything. But how crazy is that, that he uses a keyword search that he has taught himself? And so he wakes up in the morning. He works out. He's a big buff guy. And then he gets in front of the phone. He wears the little headset. And he does his. So we'll go to his messages next Thursday. And he just goes down the list, goes to his email, types in keyword search. I mean, Awesome, awesome system. Um, let's talk about three, automation of the future. And I've touched base on this. Um, everything we do should be a system. Uh, emails, uh, searches, follow-up, lead gen, everything we do, we repeat it over and over, redundant with, our, with new clients. We have all of our emails, we rarely compose a new email to a client. We have hundreds of email templates saved in Follow-Up Boss. And even, I even, I kind of do the old school way. I use Microsoft Outlook. So I'm looking at you guys on uh, 180 degrees of widescreen curved monitors. So this is my left three foot monitor and I've got another three feet. So I've got six feet of monitors, that like a, that's almost like an airplane, but I have, four windows open. I have vertical windows open. So this monitor, I've got my notes and you guys on the left. And then over on the right, I've got my calendar and my email. And I like the vertical, so I'm not moving my eyes too much to each screen. But even in Outlook, in the old school Microsoft Outlook, I have hundreds of email signatures saved and labeled that I cut and paste into my email and edit and clean up. But everything you do should become a system and written down that you can use again. Um, that's how we do the emails. And we talked about follow-up lead generation. We used to we used to set every buyer up as soon as we got off phone with them. We'd send them a Google form, and you can look at my Google form. Pull it up right now. The website is www.homesearchsetup.com. Home search three words. No 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 breaks homeshirtsetup.com. So that form, I've been using that form for over a decade. That used to go out to all our buyers and they would fill it out and then it would go back to my transaction coordinator and she would set them up with a search in our local MLS. Well then, yep, there it is. So then we came up with, or we partnered with YLOPO about two years ago. YLOPO does all of this automatically. Every new lead that comes through our YLOPO, and it doesn't matter the source of our leads, no matter if it's a referral, you know, from all the different lead sources, Zillow, all the different companies, it doesn't matter the source. It's routed through follow-up boss to YLOPO, and YLOPO asks them these questions and sets the search up automatically. So we don't use this form anymore. We don't have to. It's all automated now. And it's amazing how many times the girls say to me, oh my gosh, Y Lopo has been dripping on this lead from Zillow that came in a month ago, never would respond to all my attempts to contact. And now they're asking me to go see a house. And man, when, when, when your team sends you that text and says, this is amazing, you know, they've won, they're happy. You know, they software technology and automation, automation, has completely converted a lead for them that wouldn't respond to their attempts. And we all know that, you know, the people don't respond. I was 
in the database this morning looking at you know dozens and dozens of texts and emails and calls that there's been no response to but we never shut it down eventually they will respond um talked about home searches let's talk about let's talk about the generation let's talk about leads uh because this is kind of my forte uh my third year in the business i was contacted by remax international out of denver and they said hey what are you doing you know you are just killing it on leads and they had just launched lead street well prior to lead street um i had built my own being a techie i'd built my own lead generating website and i kid you not i bought the website through sam's club like literally the wholesale store sam's club used to sell websites and i created a cover page where before people could get to the homes behind the cover page the shrink the lead capture page they had to register and once that i had their email address i could start marketing to them well then lead street launched my third year in the business i started in real estate in 2004 and i just had already been doing that for three years and so i was killing it and i was spending money and doing a bunch of social media advertising of my remax provided lead street website that i was told by corporate was not only out producing my brokerage of all the agents here at remax Boone realty but at the time it was out producing pretty much the whole state of missouri um and then zillow launched and all the other lead sites but i i believe this is a numbers game and i've never my team we've never had a problem with leads we've never had a lack of leads the 18 years we've been doing this the number one problem i believe most of us have is the conversion and the follow-up that you know there there's plenty of leads out there and there's so many lead sources out there none of us should have any problem getting leads um there's an agent here in our office that sends postcards and his entire book of business is mailing postcards and he hand writes them and he hand mails them daily and the guy just sold a two million dollar piece of development land and it's amazing but it's what he's good at it's what he believes in it's what he does i've never mailed a postcard in my life i just not my thing um so we use follow-up boss and social media right now retargeting and if you don't know what retargeting is please write down retargeting and google it and watch youtube videos and learn the concept of retargeting it is a big big deal and if you're not doing it all your competitors are retargeting is just taking a database or a lead and snooping and following them around the world and uh we use all we use multiple companies to retarget our first one was a company that remax actually partnered with called adworks and many of you have probably heard of adworks and if you're into watching streaming television you're seeing a lot of television ads by adworks they've branched out into tv advertising um but i used adworks to to creep so to speak to follow my database so that when they're on the internet they keep seeing me they keep seeing ads for my team um, my listings and it's just putting cookies you know but if you provide their their information adworks will follow them this is how good adworks is several years ago three to four or five years ago you know covid kind of messes up my memory i i can't believe that you know we're all, all the way through 22 but um several years ago a competing agent here at my office complained to our fellow broker that she thought i had put a virus on her computer well she was always researching me she was always typing in on her computer my name my information my listings so therefore my advertising picked her up and started following her back and my broker just said well you know are you are you searching for him you know are you are you and and she's like well, well yeah you know every now and then well then you're gonna see his stuff that's how this works so so learn the learn what remarketing is and and please remarket um all your leads all your clients um jared james says there's no such thing as a past client and i believe him and we're going to talk about this at the very end we're going to talk about what's called the clv 
and this is a big, big deal, and you've got to understand a CLV. This is how you leverage yourself. This is how you sell your book of business in the future. Um, and if you don't understand CLV, that's another big word that I really want you guys to research and study when, we, when we're done here today. Um, I don't spend any of my time reading novels or books or I don't, I don't go to, when I go to TikTok, all my TikTok videos are business ideas or cooking. I've got some cooking stuff in there, but I don't see all the spam and all the junk. I see business ideas. I see recipes. I love to cook. Um, my, my, I have an unlimited Audible account and I have an unlimited Kindle account. So everything I read or watch or listen to is business related. And anytime I hear a speaker or a fellow agent or anyone mentions something, I immediately go to my phone and see if I own that edition. And if I don't, I immediately buy it right then and there. Um, and eventually I will get it down. But, you know, try to knock out a book a week, whether you're reading it or listening to it. When I get in my truck, whatever I was listening to on Audible immediately starts playing again, even if I have a five minute drive. It's amazing how much you can learn. Um, but learn remarketing and learn CLV. CLV, client lifetime value, it doesn't just apply to our industry. It applies to our industry the most, in my opinion, over any other industry. But CLV is a term that's used throughout other industries. Um, so our three main spheres, of course, is our sphere of influence, our SOI. And that is our clients. That is our book of business of people that we've done business to. And we are, we are staying in touch with them with parties. Um, I sold the farm last year, but I used to have a horse farm and I would host a big fall festival and I've got a new property and I'll probably bring that event back this next year. We haven't done it honestly for the last couple of years because of COVID, um, but it's been a huge success and I get the entire party paid for by my affiliates. It doesn't, and, and that happened guys by accident. I started putting out on social, hey, I need a band, I need a caterer, you know, I need horse rides, I need this. And all of a sudden, my affiliates, my lenders, my inspectors, everyone we refer business to said, ooh, can we be a part of this? And so we had each aspect of the party, we had it three years before COVID happened, all sponsored and we put up signs. This attraction, you know, paint, face painting paid for by blah, blah, blah and the whole dang thing's paid for. And then they want to be there and they want to mingle too, right? And they want to have fun. But um, that those, those annual fall festivals or annual client appreciation events, no matter what you come up with, if you're good at it, um, people have fun, they remember you, they talk about it. We hire a professional photographer to uh, take beautiful photos. And we even had photo booths set up with the hay stacks and the corn and we did family photos and we put our little branded logo at the bottom. And I can go to social media today. I haven't had that party for three years now. And people are still using their family photos that were taken at the event three years ago as their header photo on Facebook. If they're, I can't even put a value on that. That's a big deal because everyone that they're friends with sees that. There's all kinds of ingenious. There's a buddy of mine out in Kansas he does a, oh, Logan, I've got an entire, I have an entire Google Drive folder on fall festivals I'll share with you. I mean, there, there's, I've got the, my buddy out in Kansas, he rents his local movie theater every year and he does it in the fall and he rents out the theater and he gets up down front and he talks and he has sponsors and giveaways and it's free popcorn and free soda. And, and, uh, okay, sorry, Laura. Um, but, uh, he, that's his, that's his annual event. And he's like, Sean, it's so easy. I got another buddy out in Utah. He does an Easter egg hunt. You know, it doesn't take much to make sure that our clients feel appreciated. There's so many things you can do around those events. Um, referrals, this event right here right now today is something that spun off of when i was contacted by remax international my third year in the business and started you know back then we used to have regional 
events and I got to get on a speaker panel around the, the, our region and in front of thousands of REMAX agents. And that led to more speaking events. And those speaking events connect, reconnected me with one of my childhood girlfriend's mothers who owns an, a REMAX office in another town. And she was going through volunteer leadership at the State Association of Missouri Realtors. And she invited me to, to chair a PAG on technology. That got me involved. That, that got me involved in the State Association. Then I went backwards and got involved in my local board. Then I got involved at the national level. And what happens with this volunteering within our industry is we connect with thousands of other agents. Well, you guys are in a resort marketplace. I'm in a college town marketplace. We all know how big the referrals are, right? So last year, my team did 220 transactions, 44. 44 transactions were inbound referrals from other agents. I mean, a fifth of our business. And I, I tell every every person that gets referred to me says, hey, I got a referral. The first thing I say back to them is I absolutely love paying referral fees. And I do. I love it because a referral from another agent, the trust barrier is gone. You know, you don't have to build trust with the client. They've already vouched for you. You're not competing against other agents for the book of business. The fee that you're paying that other agent is typically smaller than what we're paying these lead generation sites, right? It's just, I love, and again, it happened by accident. I didn't do it with intent. Now I will tell you 18 years later, I give to get, I teach, I, I speak and teach here in Columbia against my peers or to my peers. And people will say, well, why do you share your secret sauce with competitors in your business? Well, number one, I don't have any secrets, right? There's nothing I'm doing that's a secret. And number two, it builds rapport with them. And in this competitive, for example, this competitive multi-offer marketplace we had that we had this last two years, my team, my agents, not, my, not even myself, but the gals, they won in a multiple offer situation because this listing agent said to their seller, hey, if you go with Sean's team, the transaction is going to be smooth. It's going to be organized. He's got processes and follow up, and it's just going to be an enjoyable transaction. So building that value with your competitors is okay. You know, as a police officer, I was a trained interrogator and and I had to interrogate the really bad crimes, the sexual assaults and the, the child abusers and stuff. I learned real quick in law enforcement, I got nowhere being the bad cop. But by being the good cop and being the best friend of the bad guy, I would get the full confession by being their best friend. They don't need to know I'm trying to build a case against them, but I never, you know, we'd always, just like TV, we'd always play good cop, bad cop. And every time I was the bad cop, I, I rarely got a confession or rarely got the information I needed out of a person. But by being their best friend and helping them and telling them I can see it from their angle, um, I always got the confession. Um, let's talk a little bit about third-party lead sources. This is on top three lead generation sources, item number three. Um, there's about 20 big ones out there right now. And guys, I'm talking about... Um, the ones where you either pay up front advertising mm -hmm. or a monthly fee, or you pay a huge referral fee. I've heard of these puppies are up in the 40th percentile these days. Um, but I want to talk about it because everyone's doing it. We're doing it. And I almost feel like in this John, this day and age, you have to do some of it. What I want to talk about is don't, don't make that your exclusive source of business. Um, we're seeing agents that are relying on those lead portals, those lead third-party lead sources, um, and they're they're not following up with their sphere of influence. They're not appreciating their past clients, um, and they're just sitting around waiting for the new lead. And if you do that book of business, your business will just ebb and flow. And when the market shuts down, your business will shut down and you're just sitting there waiting. Um, now, what that's the bad, here's the good. 
the good for the newer, younger agents that don't have a huge sphere of influence of thousands of contacts to market to, um, it will help you grow your database much quicker than you can grow on your own. Um, that is the good good news, but your you know your compensation is is much less than what you make. The great thing about about your sphere of influence, your SOI, is you're typically getting paid your worth. You're typically not paying anyone else, and you're typically not even taking a discount. Um, that is, um, Jared James calls it own the land you're working in or on, and don't rent the land you're working in or on. If you're working through these third-party lead sources like Zillow and OpCity and all those things, that is rented land. And that rented land can be taken away from you by the landowner at a moment's notice. Um, we're actually hearing right now um, locally, and I'm sure it's happening everywhere, that those lead sources are ranking agents now and they're turning people, agents off that aren't keeping their leads updated. And they will literally just say, hey, your scores are horrible. You are no longer our partner. We've got too many other agents that are doing a better job. So bye-bye. Um, so be careful with, with the third-party lease sources. So it's 1147. We've got 12 minutes left, and then we'll do Q&A. But let's talk about the, the CLV. Um, I've got some basic math here, and I've even got more math for you um, that I didn't put on the sheet. But this is why Jared James says that don't ever refer to them as past clients. And this is real math. This is a real formula that you can find all over the internet that coaches use, that the National Association of Realtors uses, that Remax uses, that our number one competitor KW uses. Um, but you just take the math there at the bottom, number three, take your average commission and this is real. These are real numbers. The average single client that we do a transaction with will do 2.1 more transactions with us over their lifetime. So that's another two deals and then some. And this number is really bad, but it's it's a real number. Number two, 15% of our clients um, will refer us to, to their friends and family members and coworkers. I think that number can be much higher if you're good at what you do and you provide a great client experience. I think it can be. In fact, I feel like I feel like my team's referral um, to to future clients from past clients is is much higher. Um, but you know, you take that math, so you take ten thousand average commission. Um, you're going to make an additional twenty one thousand, and then you're going to make another five thousand. So that single sale is really, guys, worth about four and a half, five times that initial. And the reason you've got to understand this, and this is real, this isn't hocus pocus, is that should lead you to understand where you need to be spending your time. If that is real math, real numbers that's been in our industry for decades, then spend your time there. As the market has kind of slowed down for the winter, and it always does, spend your right now, what my girls are doing is they're going through follow up boss and they're reconnecting with all their people and they're they're just touching base hey you know how's it going they're very relational but that's where you got to spend your time spend your time with the people especially you know not only with our sphere of influence do we have this huge database but within our huge database we've got levels you know you should have what's called your board of directors one of my coaches called it his board of directors. And for some people it's five, for some people it's 50, you know, but you've got this small group of people that just, you walk on water for them. They just believe in you and trust you and you need to categorize and separate them out. Um, I'm following a big team I met out at uh, the elite retreat, the Pult, Pult Rock team. Um, and they're in the Smoky Mountains. And I met the team leader, John, and we just really hit it off and just had a great time together. And I'm following him on social right now, and he's doing 12 days of Christmas giveaways. And you wouldn't believe how many people are, I mean, are, are, are opting in, you know, and it's like he's giving away a hundred dollar item a day for 12 days. So it's going to cost him 1200 bucks. And I mean, he has got a following and he's got a big team. I mean, he's, He's got a great social media following, but 
man, just to be in front, you know, think about that. Um, Flat Branch Home Loans, who I think Flat Branch is in your market, aren't they? Jim Yankee's a good buddy of mine, the owner and founder. Um, they've been doing, I think, 21 days of Christmas for years, giveaways on their site. And I mean, what's happens is your your clients, your 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 database, they tune in every day and they see you and see you and see you. And my background is in psychology. That's what I studied in college. Um, that that repetition becomes subconscious, and you know, there's nothing better than you showing up in your clients' dreams that night. And the reason you show up in their dreams is because all they saw or heard from was you. And that's a good place to be. Just don't end up in their nightmares. Um, but but the client lifetime value is one thing that our industry ignores. And it is the sole reason that we all, and we all know that person in our marketplace. And we're like, man, they're not great to do business with, but they have this huge book of business and they get all the big listings and I really don't like them. And when I talk to them, they kind of talk down to me. Well, that person's figured it out. And that person doesn't really care about you, but I guarantee you that person cares about their sphere of influence and their board of directors and their top clients. And that's why they're so successful. They're not spending all their time and energy worrying about what you think about them. They're spending all their time and energy taking care of their clients and their database and the people that refer them a lot of business. I have a nurse, Rhonda, that I sold an $88,000 house for in my third year in business. So 15 years ago, I can attribute to this day, and I've only sold that one house because she moved out, moved in with her boyfriend, and they built a McMansion in the country. So I'm never going to sell Rhonda another property, but I can attribute over $150,000 in commission of referrals. She's a nurse. And she sends everyone to me that she works with at the hospital for 15 years. She loves me. I took great care of her on an $88,000 house. It had water. I think at the final walkthrough, there was a stream in the basement. But Rhonda tells everyone about me. And, and I do. I, I, I track it. You know, I, we, in Follow Boss, they have what's called tags. And you can create as many tags as you want per client. And I'm tracking it. I mean... Ron, Rhonda's a rock star and, and you've got to have rock stars and, and that is a client lifetime value example like none other. But I think as you go through, as you go through um, your database and your, and your past deals, you need to identify those people and, and, and pay special attention to them. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm done with my sheet. So let's open it up for any questions and we'll go from there. has any questions i got so much out of that sean i just want you to know like i took crazy notes so many good ideas that 12 days of christmas thing holy crap yeah we just have to be careful with the 12 days of christmas in missouri because we're a non-inducement state right. so talk to your broker about compliance like john my buddy poltrock he's requiring them to like the page fill out a form and something else and i don't you know we we can't give to get yep we can't expect anything in return so i've never done it because i you know i, I need to figure out the legalities of doing it yeah that would be kind of that's probably a good idea though to gain more following back at you is to require you know a couple steps it's all about that call to action type thing yep um, question I had for you was um, with respect to primary agents or individual agents and delegation, what would be some good advice there uh, if they don't necessarily have like an admin or a team to delegate to? Um, well, so I'm in a college town. My first 10 years in this business, I had interns from the university. So students would get credit to come shadow me and do work for me. And I had to pay them nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done that for a while. My last intern was four or five years ago. Um, hire your kids. Yeah. You know, or, um, 
there's a lot of high schoolers that need a job or something. Put your kids on, on payroll. Um, but I, I don't know. I, my philosophy is if you're making a hundred thousand a year in gross commission income, gross an assistant and start them off part-time. So you don't have to deal with benefits and all that 20 hours a week, you know, 15 bucks an hour is the going rate in Columbia. Mm -hmm. Um, man, they will pay for themselves though. They should make you and they should, in the first year you hire them, you should go up from a hundred K to probably 150 K. And in two years after you figure out the kinks, they ought to double your income for a very minimal cost. Yeah, that's a great point. I totally agree with that. I mean, very minimal cost. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that's a big mistake. I think between all of us, whether we're individual agents on a team or team leader is, is we're afraid to hire and we're afraid to outsource everything, you know, we don't like and everything we're not good at. I agree. Does anybody else have any questions while we have Sean here? It's all quiet. All good. Well, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I know we have several agents as well that are going to revisit this video later um, too. So if anybody has any additional questions that come up, I will shoot them your way, Sean. Also, um, speaking of that, you said that they could reach out to you. Do you want to share any kind of contact information or how they could get a hold of you? Yeah, my email's easy. Um, I'm all over social too, so you can search for me, but my email's just sean at sean-more.com. Yeah, put the little dash in between the N and the M. Um, but email, text, social, go for it. Awesome. Well, we sure do really appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for your time. I loved everything that you talked about. I think that there are solid ideas here, especially when you're talking about um, making sure that your time is utilized for dollar productive activities and everything having a system and process. So I just, I love it. Great job. Cool. Great. Right. Have a great day, everybody. If nobody has any questions, we'll see you guys later. Okay. Bye everybody. Take care.